can I increase my premiums, my deposits, down the road on an IUL policy? This is a frequently asked question when somebody is setting up uh, an IUL policy. In this episode, I am going to explain why you can, but if you're pretty sure you're going to want to do that, you need to make room at the beginning, okay? Otherwise, it would behoove you to take out a new IUL policy down the road uh, when you have more money you want to deposit if you structured your IUL to only accommodate the amount of money that you were sure that you were going to put in, which is what most trained IUL specialists will do so that you will have the best net internal rate of return and you don't have any more insurance than is required, which will keep the costs low and make the insurance get cheaper as you get older. So watch the full episode to understand the dynamics behind the answer to this question. So I'm Doug Andrew. I've been a financial strategist and a retirement planning specialist now for five decades, helping thousands of Americans uh, prepare for long-term goals such as a comfortable retirement where they will not outlive their money. And many times when people get educated about the merits of property structured, max funded, indexed universal life, they go, oh my heavens, this is the dream solution to not outlive my money. This knocks the socks off of uh, IRAs or 401ks. I wish I would have known this, you know, 20, 30 years ago. For that reason, uh, most of my clients have come to me uh, in their 50s and 60s, even their 70s, because they realize uh, that by following the herd, putting money into traditional IRAs or 401ks, usually invested in the market, uh, that that was not the best choice. It may have been a good way to say, but it was a far cry from the best way because they were duped, uh, being told, oh, you'll likely be in a lower tax bracket when you retire. And uh, that's not true if you're a saver. If you're a saver, you're likely going to be in a higher, higher tax bracket when you retire because uh, most people who save money, uh, they uh, end up having so much saved that the amount of money they can pull out of that, uh, add it on top of their income, and usually they've been killing their deductions by paying off their house. Uh, the kids are gone, or if they move back in as adults, you can't deduct them anymore. In retirement, you're not contributing money to IRAs and 401ks and the like, so you don't have those deductions. If you're a business owner and you sold your business, you don't have those deductions anymore. And frankly, because of irresponsible government spending and the printing of money, uh, taxes uh, uh, are, higher when people retire. They're not lower. Most people believe that taxes in the future are likely to be higher. So they realize it doesn't, doesn't behoove you to defer, defer to some future perceived unknown advantage and withdraw your money down the road when we're convinced taxes are going to be higher. When they come to that realization, that awakening, that's when they usually need to now do a transition and do a strategic rollout, not a rollover, a rollout of their IRAs and 401ks, okay? And so uh, they come to me usually uh, within five years of retiring or at retirement, because at retirement planning is something totally different than maybe what you did for your retirement planning. And so uh, you have to reposition assets to optimize assets. Now, when I say optimize assets, I'm talking about increasing the liquidity, the ability to access money uh, when you need it without incurring 10% penalties or triggering tax or something like that. Okay, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of definitions on, on whether an investment is liquid or not, okay? Uh, just because uh, you can go get it doesn't mean it really passes the liquidity test uh, with the highest score because you may have to pay a 10% penalty accessing money out of an IRA or 401k before age 59 and a half, and you're going to trigger tax. So yeah, can you get your money? Yeah, but it, it's not very advantageous. Does that make sense? So you want to reposition money to increase liquidity. Number two is safety. Uh, not only of the institution where your money is, but safety of principle. Whatever you set aside, uh, you don't want to lose uh, uh, based on market downturns. Most IRAs or 401ks invested in the market, uh, you can lose 20, 30, 40%. People don't want to uh, have your money in, their money in the market when they retire. They can't afford to lose 30 or 40% like 2008 or 2001 to 2003. 
or uh, you know March of 2020 due, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, people lost 30% in one single month. Uh, they, they, they don't want to see that. So they want safety of principle. Number three, they want a rate of return, not pie in the sky rates of return, but uh, a rate of return that historically has beaten inflation. And so you link your returns to the things that inflate, but uh, I've always earned a rate of return that was uh, at least five percentage points greater than the inflation rate at the time by using IUL. And so you want a good rate of return uh, that has outperformed inflation, outpaced inflation. And then fourth, you wanna increase the tax benefits, not just tax deferred, you want tax free, okay? And uh, you'll understand that a property structured IUL uh, has all uh, the two benefits of a Roth, but four additional benefits that Roths don't have uh, because IUL for over a century now, uh, you, uh, you, life insurance accumulates your money tax-free like a Roth and you can access your money tax-free. But you have four additional benefits. Um, I cover these in depth on other episodes, but in a nutshell, uh, uh, you can design an IUL policy to accommodate uh, large sums of money, uh, like $300,000 to put in there if you uh, are a business owner. You can't put that much into a Roth. If you make too much money, you can't even have a Roth. That's why savvy CPAs and tax attorneys refer to uh, IUL as the rich person's Roth. You don't have to be rich to have an IUL. You can set one up for 500 bucks a month. But see, uh, a, an IUL, you can accommodate large lump sums, 300,000. You don't have to put in 300. You can put in one-tenth that, 30,000. You can make up the other 270,000 anytime you want in the future. If you don't use the little bit of room you have in a given tax year with a Roth, you lose it forever. But if you put in 300,000 and you need 200,000 back in three or four months or the next year, you can do that in an IUL. There's, you can't do that with a Roth, the little bit of room they give you. You can't, you can't access money for five years until you're age 59 and a half without incurring a 10% a penalty, okay? But if I, I put in, um, money. I can access money out of an IUL. Uh, I can use indexing, which allows me to participate when the market goes up, but not lose when the market goes down. Uh, most IRAs and 401ks or Roths are invested in the market. You can lose money. And Roths do not blossom if you happen to die. With an IUL, if I died tomorrow in an accident, I'm 72, uh, every million would blossom to about 2 million and transfer tax-free when I die. There's not a Roth around that will do that. And people say, well, how much does that cost? Well, nothing's free, but it doesn't cost me anything. It's being paid for with a minuscule portion of money that would go out the window in unnecessary tax if I followed the herd and put my money into traditional IRAs or 401ks, okay? And so uh, why would I mess around with IRAs or 401ks or even Roths when I can have those benefits and a whole bunch more? Uh, I can actually use indirect tax deductions, but I would rather have uh, my money be tax-free when I go to access it Traditional IRAs or 401ks, it's now taxable, okay? So naturally, people then, uh, they, they see illustrations of setting up an IUL, and then th I show them, okay, you wanna reposition $500,000, and uh, they're age 55 or 60, and so the fastest we can get in that $500,000, uh, generally speaking, is about 20% a year, 100 grand a year, uh, for five years and then they're done funding it. Now, you could access money uh, in the first five years. You don't have to wait till you get the 500,000 in there, but most people will wait until they've, they've uh, maximum funded it before they let it sit and grow or they start taking out income. Many of my clients put in 100 grand a year for five years. Uh, that is the maximum and then they let that 500,000 double to a million which usually takes about another seven and a half years, sometimes sooner, sometimes a little bit longer. But you know, every million dollars they accumulate can generate a 10% payout, 100,000 a year of tax-free income without depleting principal. That's what they're wanting. They're wanting the highest net spendable income. They're doing it for living benefits, not so much the death benefit, okay? And so I show them uh, putting in 100,000 a year or Maybe they're putting in uh, 10,000 a year or 1,000 a month or 2,000 a month. And so we designed the policy to accommodate that. Now, I'm gonna get a little bit complex for a moment just to prove to you that it's extremely important you go to a trained IUL specialist to design one of these for you. So if somebody came to me and they said, 
I want to sock away a thousand a month uh, into an IUL policy for the next 10, 12, 15, 20 years or 30 years, you know, maybe they're 35 or 40. Okay. Uh, I don't have to uh, calculate the minimum death benefit based upon 30 years of a thousand a month. I only have to calculate it based on the first 11 years. Don't ask me why that that's the Tefra Defra uh, corridor guideline. And so uh, 11 years times a thousand a month is $132,000. So I just simply calculate the minimum death benefit to accommodate a thousand a month for the first 11 years. Now, uh, you don't have to put in that much, 132,000 the first 11 years. You can't put in more than that, okay? You could put in the 132,000 faster than 11 years. You could put it in um, in as little as uh, uh, four years or five years, depending upon your age, but then you'd have to stop. You can't add any more money until the 12th year and then you could only put in um, the average of, you know, 12,000 a year each year thereafter. Any year you don't put in 12,000 that you could put in 12, you can make that up, okay? Now, without getting too complicated here, if I structure it that way, it's so that I have the least amount of insurance I can get away with, why would I do that? Because the objective is the best, highest net internal rate of return. I want the cost of insurance to actually uh, be as low as possible and actually get cheaper as you get older, okay? So as you put in the money and it grows, it becomes part of the death benefit so that you're self-insuring. Most of my clients maximum funded their IUA policies within five years. If we accommodated 500,000, most of them got in their 500,000 in the first five years. And, uh, the minimum death benefit for a 60 year old is only double that, a million. They could have bought way, way more life insurance than that for 500,000, but that wasn't the objective. They put in 500,000 and uh, they were able to do that technically in four years and one day, because if they put in a hundred grand the first day of each year, uh, then uh, the first day of the first year, second year, third year, fourth year, the first day of the fifth year, they put in the last 100,000. Now they've complied with Tamra. They avoided a mech. Now all the money they will ever take out will be income tax free, okay? And so in four years and one day, many of my clients have maximum funded their policy and uh, they put in 500,000. If they wanted to put in another 100,000, can I increase my premiums? No, they cannot put in another 100,000 in that policy. So the natural question is, well, can I just increase the death benefit on that? Yeah, you could but now that's a material change on that policy. And the grandfathering you achieved uh, uh, goes out the window. Most of the time, you don't wanna do that. Uh, you would take out a new IUL policy uh, if you have new money. Now, if somebody wanted to increase the premiums uh, starting 12 years or longer down the road, yeah, you could, you could put in uh, some more money starting the 12th year, but you can't put in 100,000 like you did the, the first five years. Uh, you would take that 500,000 divided by basically 11, which is about 45,000. They could put in about 45,000 a year starting the 12th year, every year the rest of their life if they wanted to, okay? Now, that's why a trained IUL specialist will show you exactly to the dollar how much you could put in in the future and when you could put it in there. Now, let's say that uh, you came to me and um, you wanted to sock away a thousand a month, maybe uh, 20,000 a year, whatever, or you uh, wanted to put in a lump sum or, or fund it with a um, uh, hundred thousand a year for five years, but you knew that um, you would likely get an inheritance or uh, a lump sum uh, from a, a, a pension uh, once you retire, or um, maybe you're gonna sell a rental home uh, in, in four or five years. If you know that in the next, you know, five to 10 years, the likelihood that you're going to have some more money, if you knew that pretty sure, it would probably behoove you to make room in your IUL policy to accommodate that money when you receive it. Okay, so that means you increase the death benefit. 
Now, if you don't end up putting that money in, you could re uh, decrease the death benefit uh, down the road so that the uh, cost of insurance uh, uh, will get cheaper as you get older. Uh, whereas if you have way more insurance than you need and you never do use the room that you could put in. So for example, if you made a IUL policy to accommodate 500,000, but you wanted room to increase and put in another 200,000, possibly in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, 10th year, okay? And you never put in that 200,000, uh, you probably ended up getting a more death benefit than you technically needed. Now, before you just lop off that extra death benefit, you wanna make absolutely sure uh, you don't do that because I've had people uh, get rid of the room and then all of a sudden they, they end up with a lump sum from somewhere else and they go, oh, well, can I put this in? I go, no, you, you took away the room that we created. Okay, don't wanna do that. So uh, you don't have to put in the lump sum, but it would behoove you to. If you don't end up putting in the future premiums down the road, then uh, your internal rate of return is gonna be not quite as good. If you earned 11 average gross, you might only net nine. I like to earn 11 and net 10. So it behooves you either to finish funding it with the room you made or lower down the death benefit to uh, only be what was actually needed for what you actually put in there, the 500,000. A trained IE will specialist will help you calculate that uh, so that you don't create a MEC, a modified endowment contract. This is an art, a science to do that. But the simple answer to this question, can I increase my premiums down the road? Yes, but if you really are anticipating that, it would behoove you to make room for that and make sure that if you don't have the money down the road, that you make adjustments if you're trying to increase the net internal rate of return so that it optimizes that. Uh, otherwise, it would behoove you to put in those increased premiums. Uh, you don't have to put it in necessarily in the year, in year six or seven, if that's when you intended, you could put it in in year seven and eight or nine and 10 or whatever. But the sooner you get it in, the better off you're gonna be as far as net internal rate of return uh, being uh, 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 within 1% of the gross rate of return sooner than later. Does that make sense? So to tweak your rate of return, it behooves you to get the extra money in sooner than later. But if you set up a policy to only accommodate a certain amount and you take the least amount of insurance, you cannot put in increased premiums down the road until the 12th year and then it may not be as much as you want to. Uh, it's basically 1 11th of the guideline single premium, which is what you put in the first 11 years, or if you maximum funded it, that's the first five years. If this sounds a little bit complex, I understand, but that's why you want to uh, talk to an IUL specialist who understands these. So the first step, if I were you, it would be to study uh, my most recent best-selling book that's been flying off of our warehouse shelves. We send out about 2,000 of these a month. Uh, it's a 300-page book, which is actually two books in one. It's called The Laser Fund. A laser means liquid asset safely earning returns. A laser fund is a property structured, max-funded, indexed universal life, okay? And so you simply click on the link below or go to laserfund.com. You contribute a nominal amount toward the shipping and handling. I require a little bit of skin in the game, okay? Uh, and then uh, I'll cover the rest of that and I'll pay for the book. I will fire out a hard copy of this to you via priority mail. Now, when you receive the book, it's actually two books in one. If you're a left brain learner and thinker, you would start out with a white, covered side. It's about 200 pages, 14 chapters with all the charts and graphs and explanations. Now, if you learn also or uh, buy stories better, you can just flip it over to this one. This is about 100 pages, 12 chapters with 62 actual client stories for the right brain learner. If you want to learn with your whole brain, uh, you can read the left brain and right brain uh, books. But uh, when you're in there claiming your free copy, uh, if you like to listen and learn or watch and learn, there's audio and video formats available for you. Uh, there's even an 18-hour master class. But if you want to uh, attend a 90-minute free educational webinar, we conduct those on a regular basis, I, I believe weekly. Uh, if you uh, want to attend a, a Retire by Design six-hour educational event, we usually do those uh, monthly. They're free of charge. But also when you're in there claiming your free copy,
If you're ready and you want to talk to an IUL specialist, and this is the creme de la creme, um, uh, you can pick the brain of one of the top IUL specialists in America that know how to do this correctly. Uh, they uh, usually have to have passed a 100-question proficiency exam with 100%, not 80%, not 90%. And so you want to see with no cost or obligation how a properly structured IUL will work in your particular set of circumstances. And if you have questions like this, then you can say, could you show an illustration of increasing the premiums in these years by this much? And uh, you'll see the dynamics of if you do that versus if you don't, and how much more death benefit will need to be worked into the policy to accommodate that. And then when you see the internal rate of return analysis and the amount of income that you will experience down the road by putting in the increased premiums versus if you don't, uh, you'll be able to make a better informed decision. So this is not about me, this is about you and making sure that when you set one up, it's done correctly.